so welcome again everyone this is our second demo in the demo series i was just talking about the uh, google classroom link i hope you all have access to it you all have either joined it or accepted the invite to join it because this is the uh, place where i'll be uploading the running notes that we take during the demo series so here you will see a section called demo 1 which refers to yesterday the topics that we have covered and if you see this attachment this is the note that we have taken up yesterday okay so if you have this google classroom link you will be able to access access the notes now in case if if this is your first time joining the demo okay so you can see a number on your screen i'll ping it in the chat as well just ping on this number saying that you want link for the google classroom so that way that way the link will be shared with you and you can you can get access to the notes now we will get started with our today's topic uh, so yesterday we we discussed about some of the basic concepts like how this training program is structured who all can benefit out of it what are some of the prerequisites for this training program some of the myths surrounding the ba course and what are the different tools that we are going to learn as part of this course now what we will do today is we will take our discussion forward and we will continue discussing on the next topics so we'll start with the first thing for today that is what about the timelines for this training how is this training structured how much time is it going to take so this entire training program approximately or at a minimum will take around 5 weeks okay so we have split this training program into first week where we'll be covering the basics of business analyst course we'll be talking about the it industry the team structure sdlc model the very basic part so that everyone everyone gets to understand how to how the it industry works actually in general now once we have built the basics basics in our first week then second week onwards is what we will be utilizing for building our ba related knowledge base so now we'll be talking about stakeholder management what is requirement what are different modeling diagrams then we move on to uh, requirement documentations then to agile or scrum we talk about stories we talk about jira tool and then the last week will be related to preparation part which will be nothing but talking about how do we prepare our resume how do we prepare for interviews what are some of the commonly asked questions in interviews and how do we respond to them okay now please understand that 5 weeks is not a fixed duration okay it is flexible not every batch will run into exactly 5 weeks more or less okay sometimes the students will have more doubts so they'll be asking more questions and it may take slightly longer to finish up the course but 5 weeks is is approximately or you can say an average time duration that we are saying but not the exact time duration now what can i expect out of this training so basically in one word yesterday we looked at our training content so whatever the training topics we will be going through you can expect to learn all of them okay now just on a brief i have put down some high level notes that once this training is complete you can expect to learn what is the role and importance of a business analyst in it industry what all activities a ba is supposed to take care of and how do you plan for those activities what are the different elicitation techniques that is 
how do we explain a requirement explaining a requirement is mapped as elicitation techniques then what are some of the what are some of the technical terms used okay. you might be belonging to it industry already you might already have an idea of what a business analyst does okay still you are not able to go through or crack the interviews for business analyst probably because you lack the usage of the appropriate technical terms so we will help you get used to these terms what these terms are how to use them when to use them how do we draw different diagrams for example use case diagram activity diagrams how do we prepare and review requirements document okay what are the different elements of solution verification and validations we'll also go through in order to do all this role what are the core skills needed in ba so i can say you that you must prepare a requirement document but in order to prepare a requirement document what kind of skills should be present in me i can tell you that as a ba you'll be a part of lot of meetings so you must be a good facilitator but in order to be a good facilitator what are the skills expected in me okay so things like a good communication skills things like ability to take good notes okay so all those things will have a separate class on this where we'll be discussing the core skills what those skills mean mean and how those skills will help you do your job effectively okay so these are some of the things that we will be expecting to learn from this training program now moving on to the next slide this we already covered but just to touch upon at the end of the training program we'll be doing three things one handing over the case study to you so that you guys can do your preparations okay while you guys are working on case study in parallel during our regular classes we will also be starting up on resume preparation interview preparation and mock interviews okay so that is we'll be discussing on what points to be added in our resume how to prepare it what points can be excluded followed by it will have resume reviews as well then commonly asked interview questions and how do we respond to those questions now yesterday uh, i'm not sure uh, raga if you have joined today or not uh, yesterday you were asking about certifications so from harsha trainings you will be getting a course completion certification but please do note that uh, other than the, uh, other than the course completion certification there are different organizations for example iiba is is one such organization that help conduct the certification related to ba okay so similar to how you have cert technical certifications like you have certifications for java python you have certifications for different uh, sql db2 mysql similarly ba is also a skill set so we have certifications for ba as well now iiba is the institute that is conducting these certifications but uh, these certifications are majorly classified into into three categories or three uh, they they have three certifications primarily in their offerings one is ecba that is entry level ba then ccba that is mid level ba and then cbap is for more experienced bas okay so ecba is your entry level certification suppose i have just started my career as a ba or maybe i have undergone a training in ba okay, and i want to do a certification you can go for ecba then we have ccba certification that is for mid level certification suppose i have 4 to 5 years of experience up to 5 years and i want to do a certification i can go for ccba 
now for more advanced certifications we have cbap okay now that requires good hands on or good exposure on the ba related work now you may have a question before we get into details of these uh, certifications you may have a question like what certification is mandatory which one can i apply for which one can i appear for so please note that certifications are completely optional in nature at least as of now for business analyst related jobs the certifications is still not kind of mandatory so if you do a certification it is more of a personal choice however when someone starts their journey newly into business analyst i do not recommend them i do not recommend them for any certification i always tell them that you focus on your training you learn you learn the concepts you clear interview start working let's work for 6 months 6 to 7 months before you appear for your first certification okay it is not as if you will be having difficulty in getting jobs without a certification without certification also you can appear for jobs the only thing is get started with a job start to do the work once you have some practical exposure once you like the work then appear for certifications the reason is twofold one it will help you get a job once you have a job you have money using that money you can pay for certifications second reason why you should do the certification after job is because a lot of organizations will sponsor your certification so you may not even have to pay from your pocket so when you join a company start working as ba maybe you can ask them to pay for your certification okay now getting ourselves back into the requirements of uh, or let me write it uh, let me first write it over here certifications are not mandatory as of now and uh, recommendation is to and you start working as a ba okay. now ecba uh, since it is the it is the initial level certification so what happens here is you can appear for it even after going undergoing a training program there are no references needed whereas if you look at ccba and cbap certifications there are at least two references needed so that means someone will have to refer or attest stating that yes bhargav has uh, experience in the ba domain and i am recommending him for this certification okay so that is why people often start with ecba once they gather more experience then they jump on to ccba and cbap if you look at the knowledge requirement also uh, for ccba you must have at least 500 hours okay and uh, in cbap you must have 900 plus hours in at least 4 uh, of 6 babook knowledge areas so IIBA is is releasing this Babook Knowledge Book that is used as a reference for the certification. Now there are two ways to enroll for or appear for these certifications. One is through becoming a member and then applying for or then paying for the certi uh, then paying for the certification cost. The second is directly applying for the certification cost. Now, usually IIBA recommends everyone to become a member, pay some membership fee, and then you select the appropriate certification. So that way you get access to the different uh, seminars or the different uh, sessions that they conduct through or the different documents that they release over time 
for the uh, business analyst related work okay. now when it comes to renewals ECBA doesn't require any renewal but CCBA and CBAP they require 60 units every three years for renewal so that means when you appear for a certification in this year it will be valid for next three years but the certification will expire and the only way to renew it is to earn CDUs the way to earn CDUs is is to volunteer in in the IIBA events that will help you get some CDUs or in the next thing for renewal could be to pay for it okay now all of the three topics that we have covered today okay, the timelines for the training outcome of the training that is what are you going to learn and this certification part does anyone of you have any question related to it Yeah, I see you have joined Raga. So I hope your question is answered. Yesterday you were asking about uh, the certification related part. Yes, I'm clear. Yeah. Sure. So we'll move on. Uh, we'll move on to the last topic and that will conclude basically everything about our training program and uh, once we conclude about our training program then we start discussing what are the different job opportunities roles and responsibilities and some of the key differences between these different roles that are available now any any kind of work that you do uh, be it it industry or any industry that basically spans into three phases okay so one is entry level then mid level and then senior level so entry level is is when you start doing something freshly newly okay so even even as a ba when you start your work maybe you will start doing your work as a junior ba if you have less less experience overall maybe you will be doing your work as a ba so these will be your entry level opportunities and entry level opportunities they they actually are more of an individual role so what is an individual role where you are majorly worried about the work that you are doing if i give you a task you finish it off and you are done with your day okay you no longer worry about what happens after it, what happens before it you probably receive some mentoring or guidance you from your seniors so? as well yes. okay so that is your entry level start you are working working on the tasks that are given to you you fin you start them finish them but you are really not concerned or bothered about what happens after you finish your task what happens or what are the things required before you start your task you probably receive some guidance or mentoring from your seniors as well now mid level upper mid level uh, work starts when you get when you gather more experience probably four plus years of experience okay so I can say entry level is up to zero to four years of work. Mid level starts with four to eight or nine years of work. Okay. Now mid level is where you have gained substantial experience. Now you are you are or you are executing your roles and responsibilities individually, but in addition to that, you are also guiding or mentoring juniors. Not only am I doing my work, but I'm also guiding and mentoring juniors. At the same time, I'm also keeping an eye on the bigger picture. I'm, not, I'm no longer doing the task that is assigned to me. 
I'm asking questions as well. What happens before it? When are we going to start? What is the timeline we have? Is it a simple requirement? Is it a complex requirement? I'm able to put forward my opinion. I have gained some experience, maybe based on my experience, I will give in some recommendations as well. Suppose I'm starting newly, a client is telling me build a login screen. So in login screen, you will have user ID, you will have password. Maybe I'll simply follow what client is saying to me. But once I have more experience, maybe I will throw in some suggestions as well that, hey, what if, you know, someone is trying to hack onto your platform. So why don't we introduce CAPTCHA as well? That in login screen, along with user ID and password, we will display CAPTCHA. And if it's a genuine human being, they'll be able to enter CAPTCHA. If it is a robot, they may not be able to identify CAPTCHA. That way we can, uh, we can stop our systems from being hacked by, the, uh, by these robots. So now you start giving these type of recommendations as well, because as you start doing a work, you gain more experience, you gain more knowledge, you are able to give suggestions as well. Okay. So here you probably work as senior business analyst or even as a lead business analyst, where not just you are doing your work, but you are also taking care of of uh, probably a team or guiding or mentoring juniors as well. Okay. Now this is where you can also enter into the world of products. Okay. So earlier when we were working in waterfall methodologies, we used to refer everything as projects. Okay. That I have got a project. We need to finish up this project. So everything was from a project perspective. Now, as we move from waterfall, waterfall to the world of agile, in agile, we are referring to, uh, in, instead of calling a project, we are referring to it as product. Okay. So a person who is helping us to build a product that is a lead BA with more experience is called product owner who is helping us build a, a good product. Now we have more senior level opportunities. Okay. That probably comes with nine plus years of experience. Now in here, your basic role could be project manager and then slowly you can gain more experience like become a senior product manager and then enter into the leadership roles as well. Now, a lot of companies, they may have uh, different levels within uh, within each uh, each designation as well. For example, they may have product owner one, two, three, that if you are uh, an early level product owner, you will be called product owner one. Then for more experience, you will be called product owner two and then product owner three. Then you will become product manager one, two, three, and then maybe you get start getting your hands into more advanced leadership roles. Okay. But remember in the world of agile, because we refer to products and not projects, that is why these appropriate roles were also introduced accordingly. Now, eventually though we are starting as a BA, but eventually what we want to do is as we gain more experience in the role of BA, we want to become product owner first okay fulfill our jobs roles and responsibilities of a product owner and then continue on to become product managers that should be your goal for the next five to six years maybe or depending on the organization that you join as well some of the organizations may have various levels within product owner itself but what my advice is to everyone as you start working as ba aim aim to become a product owner in next two to three years unless you are an uh, unless you have uh, zero experience overall if you have at least three to four five six years of experience then maybe start as a ba because of your experience you can swiftly move on to 
becoming a product owner roles okay now we have not talked about any product owner related certifications any product owner related work because that is outside of the scope of this training program okay. now in here lies our job opportunities as well so similar to similar to how our uh, different levels or career progression happens accordingly we have accordingly we have jobs distributed as well it will be easier to find lot of jobs related to business analyst up to the product owners okay you will see lot of postings in this category from product manager onwards the the postings become little less frequent why because people want someone who is more experienced on a given software should only become a product manager so if you spend some 3 to 4 year times in give, in one organization if you become a master of their system if you know their system in and out you have a good chance of becoming a product manager but when it comes to hiring from outside every organization knows that you will have to spend some time on giving kt knowledge to the person who is joining newly so that is why there may be small emphasis i am not saying a big one but there may be a small emphasis in ensuring that if we can make our in house talent into product managers rather than hiring someone from outside now when it comes to pay scales i cannot give you an exact pay scale for for ba but in the last 4 to 5 years the the pay scale across all roles in it industry have increased considerably usually we like the time when i joined uh, in it industry uh, hr used to tell us is number of years of experience you have multiply that by 1.5 year 1.5 okay and that should be your salary so for example if i have 2 years of experience multiply it by 1.5 so i get 3 lakhs okay so 3 lakhs is what should be my salary but over the last 5 years things have course corrected now the new norm is people want minimum of number of years into 2.0 this was the older convention so going by it if i have 2 years of experience multiply it by 2 times so i should minimum ask for 4 lpa okay minimum i am not saying maximum see this this number is used by the hrs to derive or to find out what's the average pay i can make this is only the average number you if you have good knowledge you can certainly demand more as well plus what may happen is if you are already earning 4 lakh for example you will not switch to another company for 4 lakh again okay so if you already have a decent package or a good package currently you obviously want slightly more than that then only you will make a switch so there are things that may change only if you are if you have less than the average package you can use this method if you are already above average then you you must take into consideration your current package plus your aspirations your experience and then accordingly you can ask for minimum 30% hike with the new organization okay any question so far so let me look at chat as well if there are any questions posted there okay so i don't see any questions
so let's get started uh, with our next topic in in guy in case you guys don't have any questions and let's start one of the important topic so that you get some clarity or visibility on what to expect what kind of work a business analyst will be doing and what kind of work a ba will be doing will lead to our next topic that is differentiation between these different roles and how the ai is going to impact the work a ba does okay. probably we can take these two topics on monday but uh, let's start over here now before you guys even started joining these demo series you all must have done some research some some type of background research to identify whether a ba is is what you are aspiring for or ba is what you are looking for now in your research what kind of work did you come across like what ba does what kind of work is expected out of a ba what's the role that a ba does in in the it industry did you read about anything we also briefly discussed it yesterday so maybe uh, you can just mention one point at a time okay so if anyone would like to mute unmute themselves yeah hi rahul hi uh, basically uh, ba is like a bridge between our stakeholders and the development team uh, who gathers who collect the requirements and deliver uh, send it to the delivery team okay so it's a he he or she is a bridge then creates requirements anything else uh creates requirements and uh, pass, participates in uh, elicitation meetings very good and uh create uh, use case diagrams and uh Let's say that there are various Actually, types of diagrams. Yeah, but these are the majorly used ones. Wonderful, guys. Uh, you have done your research thoroughly. So a a BA definitely starts their work by acting as a liaison between stakeholders and development team. and uh, thanks uh, manideep for using the term stakeholders and not client usually uh, during our demo series we just for the sake of simplicity and for everyone to understand we often refer to the word client even i use that word in our demo series but when we actually get into training programs we emphasize everyone to start using the word stakeholder okay now a development team for a ba is not just developers it is developer plus qa both okay so a ba's basic work starts starts as liaisoning between the two different parties these two different parties stakeholders and development team they they are not on the same page a development team is more worried about the code that needs to go in place whereas a stakeholder is more worried about the finished product that what kind of software i'll be looking at so they talk on two different terms they talk on two different languages so that is where a ba ba being a bridge helps in because a ba is someone who has understanding of the technical world who understands how a software is built what are some of the basic things required to build a software 
plus who can who can talk to stakeholder gather information from stakeholder in a regular normal way <coughs> and convert those information that you gather from stakeholder into requirements people often get confused that stakeholders directly give you requirements stakeholders share the vision or their goal with the bas that maybe i want to build a login screen that's not a specific requirement so ba has to explore and get information from stakeholder okay you want a login screen good what kind of login screen do you want do you want lot of designs to be appearing on your login screen do you want your login screen to be very simple with just user id and password do you want user id and password to appear at the left hand side of the screen middle of the screen right hand side of the screen where do you want to appear now you see at the end stakeholder is giving me responses but a ba is asking questions so that stakeholder is made aware of what what all information is needed a stakeholder may not know up front that what are the components of a screen whether the data should appear on the center of the screen on the left side of the screen on the right side of the screen they may not know all that so that is why they are just sharing their vision that i want a login screen from their vision a ba is is asking or interrogating with through lot of questions that's basically what ba is doing through these questions the aim is to get relevant information out of stakeholder now we can do designing ourselves we can create a login screen by ourselves and then throw it to stakeholder saying that you know this is what we have created and the stakeholder may not like it now if you go to good shops okay if you want to relate it in your real life if you go to good shops probably you say your goal to the shopkeeper let's say you want to buy a mobile phone you go to a, you, you go to nearest reliance digital chroma store and you ask them i'm looking for a smartphone that has good camera quality now based on your uh, expectations or goal or vision the person attending you will try to give you different different recommendations that uh, are you just looking for camera or uh, video recordings as well because they may give you suggestion accordingly if you are looking for video recordings probably you should buy a phone that offers you good storage capacity and this is the phone that will give you good storage capacity so looking at your vision the the shopkeeper actually gives you recommendations or asks you more questions to get more information out of you once that information is out he or she will not say buy something they will put some products in front of you so that you can pick and choose what looks good for you the same thing happens in the it industry as well if we want we can build the software on our own using the vision that the stakeholder has shared but whatever software you may build the stakeholder may not like it so what we do is we probe the stakeholder we ask them relevant questions we ask them in fact lot of questions we get the answers of it then using those answers we build our requirement and that is where the requirement then comes into picture now this stage also include documenting your requirements okay now along with requirements in order to further clarify our concepts further clarify the subject we take help of different types of diagrams now is this alone enough probably no the next step that a ba does is to get involved in design as well now you may be wondering that rahul we don't know the 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 coding language the programming language so how do we how can we create a design okay so you your involvement is in design is not to actually design for a system but is actually for review okay. 
so at this stage we involve the technical leads or the technical architects share our requirements with the appropriate diagrams to them ask them to create a design <coughs> on how this entire requirement can be implemented once they set up once they create a design then we review that design with respect to our requirements that whether this design is addressing is covering all the requirements that we have shared are there any requirements missing from the design or if you are not clear about the design you will set up a meeting with the lead or the architect to understand the design you must have that confidence that this requirement is going sorry this design is going to meet the requirements before we move forward okay if there are any changes we can do it over here as well now once we have that design then then that the next stage that comes in is handing over when i say handing over that does not mean that we are not going to do the work so let me use another word now in some cases this development team itself may be doing uh, design in in more cases in good uh, large organizations there is a separate architecture team that will take care of the designs okay but in either case uh, once we are done with our uh, requirement documents we share it with our development team along with the design so that the development team can now get started but there is one more thing that happens how do we know that our requirement document is complete or not how can we ensure that our requirement document is actually complete so there is one small thing that we do so once our requirement document with diagram and everything is ready we ask for a stakeholder review the stakeholder will review our requirement document will explore different sections that we have covered in the requirement document and will give their sign off once we have sign off from a stakeholder we know that we have confirmed requirements now we can move forward please note that a sign off does not mean that requirements will not change a sign off only means that and as of today when i when a stakeholder is reading the document they are okay with whatever requirements that are listed in the document but in coming days maybe the businesses will change businesses will evolve and so do the requirements see no business is static in nature every businesses are dynamic in nature so when businesses are dynamic so do their requirements as well so requirements keep evolving they keep changing as well so a sign off does not guarantee that requirements will not change okay so that's a different aspect that we will cover in the coming days in our training program on how do you handle changing requirements but for now assume that you send it to stakeholder review stakeholder will give you sign off and that's an indication that my requirement document is complete and i am good to share it for design and then later on with the development team as well now a lot of effort of a ba i would say approximately 70 to 80% of the effort is spent over here as a ba this is your major task where you will be interacting with the stakeholders talking to them building a good rapport with them communicating with them creating your requirement documents and spending time on design reviews as well this is where you will be spending your 70 to 80% of the time remaining effort is spent with the development team that is sharing the document with the team then addressing questions and when i say questions these are related to requirement
so team may have questions um, team may have suggestions as well they may offer you better suggestion on uh, how, what all points to be include in the requirement document so as to keep keep it aligned with the software they can give you suggestions as well so you address their questions then attend meetings related to the team okay so these three aspects they may they may not con take considerable amount of time but let's say 20 to 30% of your time is spent over here where you are communicating with the team addressing their questions following up with the team to ensure that you know they are on right track they they don't have any open questions with respect to requirements keeping a track of the work not to micromanage your team but so but to ensure that you know we are on we are making the progress as needed so that we can accordingly set up a product demo because in agile what happens is once you build once you have once you are done with your work you give a demo to the to the stakeholder that this is what we have done and for that demo they will give their feedback whether they are okay with the work whether there is some scope of improvement so accordingly we can set up for that demo and the deployment deployment is is when when actually we start using the software in the production environment okay and maybe you will do some kind of testings involved over here now along with addressing questions of the team there is one more thing that you do that is test case review whatever our tester or qa person is going to write the different test cases whatever those test cases will be since as a ba you have written down the requirements you review these test cases to ensure that these test cases cover all the requirements if if some part of requirement is missed you give a feedback to the qa that you do not have test cases corresponding to certain requirements for example let's say i am going to build a system which will print voter id cards now i have lot of data of of uh, my countrymen out of that data what i will do is i will select for people who whose age is greater than let's say 18 years and let's say i'll i'll just keep it simple nationality is indian okay so if you satisfy these two criteria i will print voter id card for you and then dispatch it now assume that everything has gone by we have we have written down detailed requirement we have sign off we explained it to the team and everything is is complete design is also ready now it comes the chance of test case review so a tester has written testing like uh, ensure that ensure that voter id card is printed for indian nationals okay voter id card is not printed for non indian nationals or nris i'm just giving you scenarios and they have also written a third test case saying that ensure that voter id card is printed for with age greater than 18 years okay now these are the three test cases that the qa has written and they hand it over to you now what as a ba we also have to ensure is that the test cases are covering for the requirements that i have written 
if it is not we give them a review feedback that you know you have to accordingly adjust i mean either edit your existing test cases or add more test cases to account for the missing scenarios for example the first scenario okay now compare this one okay now which which one looks appropriate or more better to you guys the first scenario or the second test case scenario which one looks more matching with the requirement so this is our requirement so out of these two test cases which one is matching with our requirements second the second one yeah. very good yes so the second one is matching more closely with our requirement now when i see a, a qa has written a test case like this obviously we are not validating only indian national both criteria must be true that is you must be an indian citizen age must be greater than 0 if either of the two fails if you are greater than 18 years but you are not an indian citizen then the voter id card should not be printed if you are an indian citizen but age is not greater than 18 years then also the card should not be printed okay so the first case i look at it and i give them a suggestion that this is not just check of nationality nationality plus age both should be evaluated together so obviously after feedback they may change it to like this similarly for negative scenarios we can check for these cases like okay if it is just the non indians or you can also check for scenarios where age is less than equal to 18 years a good test case always talks about the positive scenarios like this one this is a positive scenario why a positive scenario because it will give us what we want a voter id card then a good test case should also have negative scenarios negative scenarios does not mean that they are not going to give you expected result negative scenario is is that the voter id card will not be printed in these cases okay so like that we we review the test cases as well because this test case is finally shared with stakeholders as well when i give a demo to the stakeholder they are simply not going to look at the software and think you know that it is all done along with demo or before demo they also want to look at what kind of testing you guys have performed and when you guys performed the testing what was the output that you received so share me a document with all the test cases you covered and what's the result you received in all the test cases that is how even stakeholder will get confidence so a stakeholder may not ask for code related documents but a stakeholder will definitely ask for testing related documents so that is why it becomes important for us as a business analyst to ensure that we review the test cases we give suggestions feedback once the testing is complete then we again review our testing document and before sharing it with the stakeholder we ensure that everything is complete or looks complete at least now that is pretty much what uh, you guys will be taking care as a ba at, at a very high level okay at a very high level we just covered the flow now there are other activities as well or there are other caveats included in this on on conducting meetings how do we conduct meetings what kind of details how do we stay focused on the meetings when we talk about elicitation coverage or when we talk about any kind of documentations how do we create the documents are there any specific templates that we can follow 
so there are multiple caveats present within each of these topics that we will cover in the upcoming classes as we go through okay any questions so far Okay, I'll take the silence as no questions. Now tomorrow, uh, sorry, not tomorrow. On Monday, when we start our discussion, we'll start with some of the uh, commonly used, commonly discussed roles along with BA. What differentiates between the two, or are all of them the same thing? Plus, the last thing that we may uh, have a discussion on these: the usage of generative AIs. Okay, are they helping? how are they helping what kind of uh, usage they can provide or are they here to do the jobs as well okay so that we will have a discussion on monday so that you will have a better clarity on what to expect between different categories of role what type of work is expected between them and how the the gen ai thing is going to have an impact on the role that we are planning to learn Okay, so with that, uh, I hope to see you again all on Monday at the same time, 7 a.m. IST. If you do not have a link to Google Classroom, please send a WhatsApp message on this number. Okay, and the link will be shared with you. All these notes that running notes that we take during the demo series will be uploaded into the Google Classroom for you to access. Thank you everyone, we'll connect on Monday.